Hello, this is Tammy C. Walker, owner of Dreams Are a Reality, and I am here with a different style video. This came at the request of a viewer, Tasha. She's been patiently waiting. As you all know, I had COVID, and um, with the holidays, it I knew this was going to take a little time to create. I know how to do um, PowerPoint but I really haven't done it where I combine it with a YouTube video. So um, I had to do some little research to figure out how to do it. And it looks like I was successful. So today I'm going to talk about creating a budget, credit repair, and home buying. So if this is something that interests you, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. If this content resonates with you or helps you, and um, my voice is going in and out. <clears throat> Pardon me. This channel is all about light and love. So I do a lot of stuff, mainly about relationships, um, self-improvement, self-care, um, raising your confidence, raising your self-esteem. I talk about a lot of stuff, to be honest. I might talk about some of the current events. I like to incorporate sports in there because I'm a big Bulls fan, a big Bears fan, even though I don't know why. I play tennis and I use the um, correlation of sports with life because many times athletes have to visualize what they're doing before they do it. I know when I play tennis, I, in my mind, I'll say there is not a ball I can't hit. Even when the ball is real short or perhaps very long, I'm able to get it sometimes because mentally I already see myself getting it. So that's why I like to talk about sports a lot. And a lot of times athletes have gone through so many things to get to where they are. They've been rejected. I always think about Serena and Venus and what all they've gone through to just maneuver through the sport of tennis. And groundbreaking they are for all of us as well as other great tennis players. And I can go on and on with the athletes. I won't even go go there because today, let's talk about creating this budget. If you want to buy a home, one of the first things you really want to do is make sure you have your finances in order. Make sure you check out your credit report. Well, you have to do all that before you can even get started with the home buying. So let's start with the budget. I, now I went old school. You know, I'm a little bit older than some of my viewers, so I do some stuff old school, the old school way. Really, what I really do is honestly write uh, my bills out each month. I also use a spreadsheet too, either or. But today I did a table for you all. So you can use like Mint, that software. They have bill paying, um, I guess, applications or whatever. That's no shortage of. You can just type in bill paying applications or bill paying templates or spreadsheets. There's so much stuff on this internet. It's mind blowing. But in Excel, if you go under um, new document, they have a spreadsheet already set up for you to pay your bills. So that's one thing you could do. I did it the long way. I went in Word and created a short table, but it wasn't hard to do. So um, without further ado, let me get started. I think I'm going to get a little pen so I can use that in case I need it. Now, let's look at the budget. January 2022. This is a fake budget of mine, but this is what mine looks like when I do it on the spreadsheet as well as in my notebook. I write down every bill that I have, the amount, I write down the due date, and I write down the date I pay it off or pay it. If it's on the spreadsheet, I just key in my information. This helps me so much. It gives me a snapshot of January. I already know I have all these bills to pay, and I actually have more. I have more bills than that um, to pay, and it keeps me on point. One way to have good credit is to make sure you pay your bills on time. I mean, one ding. You could be late one time over 30 days. It will drop your score. So being timely with your payments is crucial it also raises your score a good score you can get a car for a lower interest rate finance rate same with your home credit cards a lot of stuff even your employment looks at your credit so it's good to have it's good to have good credit that's for sure so i just used a um 
you know, number of $4,000 per month as a salary. This is after taxes. So, you know, once I pay my rent, my car note, and these bills, I still have, you know, quite a bit left for savings, for entertainment, for emergency fund, whatever I need. Again, this is not my real budget, but I want to give you an idea of how I do set it up. And this is what I do every month. I've been doing this for years and it holds me accountable. I don't go and buy some red bottom shoes knowing I have, you know, $1,100 in rent to pay. I pay my bills first and I play later. So that's a rule of thumb you want to use as well as sock away something for savings. Some people say 20%. I have two incomes, thank God. Um, so I, I really, I try to live off of my 40, 30 hour, 35 hour job. My therapy practice that I do part time, that's Tammy money. So, um, and honestly, you know, like my dear friend states a lot, she is right. If you can get it to where you have four incomes coming in. You know, I have a book that I've been working on for years. I can get that rolling. That may be another stream of income. Once my YouTube channel keeps going, that's going to be a stream of income. I would like to add another one and another one because what COVID has showed us, even before COVID, like the big bust in 2008, when people were losing their jobs, you always want to have a backup plan. Sometimes, unfortunately, employers, uh, they just seem like we're disposable. And when you know you're at a job and they're going to lay you off or they don't appreciate you, if you have your own side business and a, a third income, you feel a little bit better. If they do let you go, maybe even you can do the big quit of 2021, 2022, quit your job. So it puts you in a place of control and that's what you want to be in but this is the budget you can just go on word hit insert table i just did four columns and like 15 rows you do as many rows as you need for your budget and if you did print this out if you want to you might not want to but i like my stuff I'm, i like to have it you know where i could touch it <laughs> plus i highlight it and do different stuff with it but this is what the computer is for it does it could do all that too see you can highlight it oh i wouldn't want to do that do they have it erased let me erase this i ain't like that but yeah you can use this to how just to highlight it you all oh gosh see once you pay you can just highlight it on here there you go the virgo has to clean it off ha <laughs> ha okay but this is your budget do this for every month of the year you are going to feel amazing knowing you know everything you have to pay laid out in front of you. Consistency is key in anything successful. Consistency is key when it comes to having good credit and paying your bills. So get started. January is a beautiful month to start. Let's move on. Next, what about your credit reports? Do you know your score? I use Experian and Credit Karma. Credit Karma is going to show you TransUnion here. And it's, I think I do want to use this. TransUnion and Equifax. Experian, I pay for that. Credit Karma is free. But Experian, I pay a small fee per month. Because I like to use Experian for when I was looking to buy a home, which I may do that again. I didn't get one last year, but I may give me a townhome this year. And experience shows your FICO 2 score. It shows we have different number of scores. Uh, FICO 2, FICO 8, and it's another number. Um, one is like your auto score if you want to buy a car. The other one is your home score if you want to buy a house or build an income property as well. FICO 2, it tends to look a little lower because they are more strict because they don't want to give people homes that they can't afford. But go get on Credit Karma. Put in your information, download the app, and look at your score weekly. That's what I do. That way I don't have any hidden surprises. When I pay something off, I could tell if it's being removed. I just like to follow my credit closely. The three credit bureaus are, I already just said that, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. These are their phone numbers. You can call them if you have any questions. 
you may write or type a letter, mail it to these addresses, and just say, you know, I am Tammy Walker. Here's my social security number. And I was like, Ugh, you don't want to write that down. Um, here's my address. Sign it. Mail it to all three. And they will mail you back pretty quickly to a free credit report. Or you can request it online on their websites. This is important because you need to know what is under your name. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's errors. And I've talked to people and they're like, one thing I want to do is straighten out my credit. Okay. Did you pull your credit reports? I'm scared. It's it's in bad shape. Therefore, I don't know where I'm looking at on this camera, you all. I'm so sorry if it looks weird. Therefore, um, they don't even know what is on their credit report. It could be an error. It could be uh, something from your previous spouse. It could be somebody with the same name as yours and they've thrown it on you. It could be a family member. Always, always, always know what's on your credit report. That is so important. Even if you're terrified to look at it because your credit is bad, it's the first step. It's pulling your report. How do you know where you're going to go if you don't even know what's in front of you? Don't be scared. You got to have faith and start, start today. Get those credit reports this month. Get it. And then that way you can start working on your credit. Always check your credit report. Do not be afraid, as I just stated. This is my advice about credit reports. And again, I said I use Credit Karma and Experian. I check my reports via my apps weekly. I'm kind of not telling the truth, because sometimes I do it daily. I didn't check it today, and I don't think I checked it yesterday. So I do it pretty much weekly for the most part. Let's just say you pull your credit report, and you see four old things. You um, have... A credit card from 2019 you didn't pay you have a small medical bill for I'll say three hundred dollars from 2020 you have an error and maybe another credit card bill from 2019 let's just say two okay so one one thing is saying well let me change the date let's say it's from seven years ago and it's going to fall off March 2022 or May 2022. Not trying to be unethical, but you might not want to hit that one first. It's going to drop off anyway. It's old. Go to your more current items that need to be paid off. Start with the biggest one. Like say that credit card is $1,500. Who has it? Because if it's old, a couple of years old, it's with a collection agency. Get their number. All this stuff is going to be online. It's probably even if you look at your credit report, the phone number will be on there for the collection agency. Call them. I hope you have extra money too because if it's $1,500, they may take $700 and wipe it off your credit. So see if you can negotiate. That's, this is what I did. I had to pay off some things last year. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. All I have is I just gave them a percentage, like 40%, 50%. 60%. Oh, I don't know if we could take that. We could settle with you for blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but this is all I have. They sure took it. And it got wiped off my credit within 30 days. Um, but definitely pull your credit report. See how many negative things you have and start working on them right away. Do not beat yourself up. That's what it said under here about your credit. It took a while to, you know, mess it up so it may take a little time to repair it but stay the course here are the rankings of your credit score 300 through 629 they consider bad so if you're 600 if you're 620 do not beat yourself up you are you are almost there it could be two or three payments away from a an increase in your score you pull your credit report and you might find an error correct the error You'll you you'll bump up to 630, 689. My credit score, sometimes it shoots up 10 points at a time, sometimes 15. It all depends on what's happening. Um, when I started working on my credit last year, it, sh it shot up. Oh, it shot up a lot. It shot at least, I almost want to say 100 points, to be honest, maybe. It definitely shot up a lot because I was working hard. I was working hard to get my credit straight. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, I bought a house back in 1995. I went through a divorce in 99. My credit hit the toilet because we had a double income 
and I and I had debt. It seemed like I had more debt than my ex husband. And once um, we divorced, my, of course my debt was mine, and if it, it was like I was upside down. Anyway, it caused a, a firestorm, and it took me a minute to get that back straight. Once I did get it straight, years later, um, things were good for a while, and then I went back to school. When I went back to school, I had to do an internship, and my internships were unpaid. So I was driving Uber, doing my internships, and going to school, and then working some, but it was not enough. And then once I graduated, it took me, I would say, a year and a half to really get a job that paid what I needed to pay, you know, maintain everything. So I fell behind on like Target and a couple of credit cards. Then I ended up with a big dental bill. So I was like, I had to clean up like four things. Target wasn't that bad. It, I just had a late pay on there. One of them was because I missed the cutoff to pay my bill and they marked it. Like, it was so stupid. Anyway, I fixed it all. Everything is fixed. But, um, and I beat myself up because I know how important credit is. And I had to give myself grace because I went back to school for my master's degree. But it's just a shame that had to happen. But things happen to make us better. So that's why I'm doing this for you. Okay, back to the scores. 630 through 689 is fair. You think 689 is good, right? Almost though. Good is 690 through 719. And you definitely want to aim for this excellent score of 720 through 850. Therefore, you can get a... 0% um, rating when you go get your new car. You can get a good rate when you buy your home. Even for a new job, they look at all these credit scores. So you don't want to have bad credit. You better than that. So try to work on getting this fixed. So once you've gotten your budget together, you have gotten your credit score raised up. And don't think that could take 12 months. You can raise that up in three months, two months, five months, four months. It doesn't take a year. It is time to look for a home. Now, if you get an income tax refund, like some people do, some people get bonuses. I've had jobs where I got great bonuses. These are ways to um, have the money for your down payment. Hey, America, everybody don't have $30,000 to put down. Everybody don't have $20,000. Some people do want to go in with a lower down payment. This is where first time ownership, home ownership can come in handy. I live in Illinois. I know we have a beautiful program where they'll give you $10,000 towards your down payment or also pay for your closing costs. Sometimes you can get the seller to pay for your closing costs. So if you're a first time home buyer, get excited because there are a lot of benefits out there for you ask your mortgage person they 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 will know all of this and do your own homework do your own homework um and home ownership is not for everyone i actually enjoy renting um i live in a luxury they call it luxury i don't think my unit is not the most luxurious one because i didn't want to pay the money but it's a nice place i have my own washer dryer i have a patio uh, we have a fitness center we have a tennis court they need to up to me they need to update that stuff we have a volleyball sand volleyball court it's a beautiful management company i do i will get them credit for that they had a christmas party i didn't get to attend that they had a summer party which was so nice with a food truck and i ended up winning a starbucks gift card so I live in a nice community. It's in the western suburbs of, of Chicago. And I'm very grateful because in the summertime, it, it's so gorgeous over here. So for me, a renting works because I'm by myself and I just don't want to fix anything. But I'm open to buying property again. I had a home many years ago when I was in my um, mid-20s, me and my ex-husband. But that was a good experience. It was kind of stressful um, learning about that house because it was a starter home. An older lady and her sister owned it. They hadn't done much work. It was really cute though. Cute house. And we redid the landscaping. We fixed up the garage. We had to do some of the heating. And um, I think we put an air conditioner unit in it. It did not have air. We, we installed. We got the central air installed. Put down new carpet. We sand the um, floor. We had hardwood floor in one part. We put down new tile in the kitchen. My ex-husband was an architectural major in high school, so he could do that stuff. He he could do that stuff very well. He gutted out our bathroom. We had a 
to have finished basement with a bathroom down there, but he gutted out our main bathroom. We, it was a beautiful house, and once we got our divorce, we sold it, and we made a decent prop profit because he had done so much work on it but it was so stressful i didn't make a lot of money he made more but he was part-time at one time and then he converted to full-time he he worked for our transit authority here and i think he still does i don't talk to him but assuming he does but anywho um that taught me a lot about home ownership okay so enough of my babbling pull your credit report always know what's on top of your credit report when you go to the mortgage um person what's the proper name mortgage consultant um it is good that to know your own financial picture you don't want them telling you hey this is on your credit report this is on your credit report you should know everything on there they were telling me what was on mine i was like yeah i knew all of that oh you just have a couple of things you need to pay off yeah i already knew because i had pulled everything you always want to know what's on your financial picture once you get closer to getting ready to apply for your home ownership or your mortgage gather all of your income your check stubs your bank statements your your tax um, statements have all of that get your employment information ready they're going to want to know where do you work you know the phone number address get it together they're concerned about the last two years so if you started a new job two months ago, make sure you have the last two years ready. Check your FICO 2 score. This is why I like Experian, because I can check my own FICO 2 score. Check that out. It's really good to be 640 and higher. 622, it can also get you a home, but you really want to be 640 and higher. Um, like I was saying before, it's a lot of home, first-time home buyer grants. I'm in Illinois, so www.ihda.org, that's a way you can get um, a loan, you can get help with your assistance, you can get help with your closing costs. Also, if the seller is trying to relocate, they may pay for your closing costs because they're trying to get out of, out of their home. So it's always good when someone wants to relocate. They are a little bit more, um, what can I say, generous sometimes. Also, if their house has been on the market a long time, they may take a lower price. They may pay for your closing because they want to get that property off their hands. A good realtor, he or she, they're going to know all about the property. You know, if you want a frame home, if you want brick, if you want a condo, if you want a town home, if you want income property, they're going to know about all of that. Like where I live, if you buy a home in this suburb where I live, it can be 150000 or more than a, a home in the suburb where I used to live. I used to live like seven minutes away. And just those two different locations, the, the home price is so different. Where I live at here, the homes are quite pricey because it's a kind of, it's more like a ritzier suburb, but I think their taxes are real high. The next suburb over there, taxes are not as high, but you can get the same type of home for less money. So know your locations. Location, location, location is everything. And if you have kids, that school district is important. You see what we're going through here in Chicago. I don't have kids. I don't live in Chicago, but I'm just showing you the importance of knowing your location. Compare the mortgage rates. It's always good to talk to two or three mortgage companies or banks. Don't just settle for the first thing you see compare make them do some work they always say it's good to have three to six months of an of an emergency savings we can't get to that six they definitely shoot for the three your mortgage you know is uh, 1500 you got 4500 socked away god forbid for a rainy day because a rainy day is coming and when it comes to you buy a house a standalone house that roof flies off you got to fix it that Furnace breaks, you got to fix it. A furnace, it can cost, it is going to cost thousands if it's brand new, if it's not just a repair. Hot water tank, you got to pay for it. Your dishwasher break, you got to pay for it. Washer dryer go out, you got to pay for it. You want to always have this money to the side. Have a credit card with a, a good, like at least $5,000 or more with a house because the Home Depot, you might, you need a major credit card where you can go and buy material if you need it. Okay, so once you found your home, you would tell the realtor, did I spell that right? Nope, I misspelled that. Sorry, y'all. And they would put your uh, put in your offer. Here's the catch. 
it, it at one point it was a buyer's market so they were they were getting many offers on one house so you may not get um exactly the house you want right away i'm gonna drink some water because my voice is trying to go out pardon me <clears throat> excuse me you all you may not get the house you want right away also um you may go back and forth the house is 180 you tell them 172 they want to go to 175 so you're going back and forth but a good realtor would be able to know how to will and deal your offer and you know it's exciting to get that that offer accepted i remember when that happened for me um but let's just say you you do the offer did get accepted then the closing would be 30 to 45 days later there you will have your attorney the sellers will have their attorney and you always want to get a home inspection i don't care if you're buying a brand new home get a home inspection because we don't know what's under that structure or we don't know if it's termites or mold but your home inspector can see things maybe the foundation has a crack those things are important you do not want to buy a money pit or something that you're going to regret buying you want your purchase to be an enjoyable purchase <clears throat> excuse me and you're going to have you got to have homeowners insurance as well as pay taxes on your home this all can be rolled into the mortgage mortgage is 800 homeowners insurance is 120 and um, your taxes is whatever that's going to be if you are buying a condo if you're buying a townhome that's what i want thank god the townhomes here the hoa is lower that i've been looking at but our condos, I'm looking at those condos. I've seen HOAs. And what does HOA stand for? Homeowners Association. That can be $400 and up. Sometimes two something. I've seen 200 something dollars through 540 here or more. Not six though. I've seen 200 through 540. That's a lot. If your mortgage is like 750 or 800 and you have to tack on another 500 it's, it's not it's no longer fun so beware of the high homeowners association fees this is for condos and townhomes this covers the roof the winter when they have to come out and you know plow and shovel the snow this covers your landscaping um, the exterior stuff so that's why you have to pay that fee but if your furnace broke down oh lord am i hitting a gray area still got to pay for it in in a condo yeah you still got to pay it's still you still have to pay for it but the homeowners association covers the parking lot and the exterior stuff as well as the roof landscaping etc i think i hope i'm getting that right sometimes it's better to buy a standalone house but you got to do everything i'm personally not interested when i get remarried if my hubby wants a house yes together we can but by myself i don't want to be bothered with i don't do grass i don't do outdoor stuff so um i don't need that but i will take a nice town home i'll take a nice two bedroom two bath condo or what else did i say i like yeah those are the two town home two bedroom two bath condo i maybe would buy a standalone house but it has to be small because i don't want to do i don't have time you all to be cleaning all of that stuff that's another thing some people say i want five bedrooms and this is this these many bathrooms and all this land you got to take care of all that stuff and me personally i'm gonna be honest i like clean house so i just have one bedroom one bath right now and i it's i keep my stuff clean but sometimes i don't have time like when i'm running 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 to the school and then i'm doing my clients maybe i have 10 clients for the week which is a lot part-time plus a full-time job i have bills to pay i have the doctor appointments to keep up with i love to watch my bulls i love to go out to eat with my friends if it, you know if it wasn't as bad as it is now and i have events with my family you know um trying to get that love life back cranking there's some things going on and um you know i'm busy so when you get these big houses you are responsible for all of those rooms to keep it clean you don't want a big dirty house and i'm a little creeped out personally i wouldn't want five bedrooms just for me I, I don't know i think enough room for me is two or three bedrooms i don't need anything where i'm being creeped out by myself it can be creepy alone i'm not scared of here i'm saying big house i don't know it just doesn't resonate with me hey to each his own
to each his own. Don't forget about that yard. You have to clean it. Um, you will get fined. If you don't rake those leaves, you will get fined. Got, um, even in the suburbs. I did some errors in here. I'm looking at this. Pardon my errors. I was typing fast. But I just want you to make the right decision for you. Let's see what else. They have a fixed rate. That's where if you get a rate of 3%, it's going to be fixed through your 15-year loan or your 30-year loan. So you, you can decide which one you want. Most people do do 30-year loan. Some people do 15, but a lot of people do 30 years, so it's more affordable for you. An adjustable loan is scary because some of those can be what they call the arm and that thing, it'll be the same amount, 3% for four years, that fifth year, it does a balloon and that's going to raise your mortgage. So be aware of that. That thing is scary. And the conventional, this means it's not backed by the government. This is backed by a private lender or the two government sponsored enterprises, which are Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. F FHA loan that is backed by the government, such as like the HUD housing or FHA period is a government loan backed by the government, excuse me. So how much house can you afford? Let's just say you make, I use the salary of 68,000 a year. You take 28% times your salary. You want to divide that by a hundred and that will give you how much house you're looking at purchasing so 190,000 here in Illinois um you could get an okay house um you know Illinois is a tripped out place um it's huge by the way if you don't live here or if you're not familiar it goes all the way up by Wisconsin which that is like Waukegan Highland Park Highland Park is very expensive Michael Jordan used to live there just to give you a rough draft will match money and then it can come on down through um let me see i'm going by my memory um rosemont area if you come on down a little bit more west oak park beautiful suburb so some of those houses are very expensive all through there chicago is up and down we have um some very expensive areas a gold coast area where a lot of our basketball players um, live and our hockey players so it's money all up and through chicago it's it's a beautiful beautiful city and a beautiful I, I say beautiful a lot it's a nice state it really is uh, we have some corruption going on in illinois and chicago but you don't get to hear the good stuff it's if you want to buy property it's a lot of places to choose from but i i would admit like nashville and uh i think atlanta is overcrowded but hey you can buy better property there for less houston dallas but if you want to live in the Midwest like me, I would say, I tell people, come on over to DuPage County. And some of this stuff is not affordable either, but I'm looking at townhomes and they are very affordable for me. They're not far from where I live now. They're kind of like not old, they're in the middle or more newer, more modern, but very affordable. So I'm staying in the suburbs where I can afford, but uh, you definitely want to get something you can afford and don't worry they're not going to approve you for something out of your budget anyway because you don't want to be house poor you want to use that 28 percent of your salary for your house that way you're not underwater take your time looking for your home this is a big investment i had to learn this years ago i used to be the type when i wanted something i wanted but now i'm learning it's a time and a place for everything and now i'm able to wait you know, like last year, I was going to buy a house. I was working on that from maybe November through May. And I got so tired of, like, I had to clean up my credit report. It seemed like the mortgage um, lady, she, like, faded out. I had to get a second one. It was a lot of weird stuff happening. And I was like, well, maybe it's not time because I had pushed back my lease. I told my landlord I was buying a house. And she was letting me do every six months or month to month. Did it go month to month? Every six months. And I didn't want to keep doing that. So that's why I ended up renting here. But take your time. And if you don't get one this year, get ready for 2023. And that gives you a chance to line up everything. Don't be in a hurry when things don't go your way. It gives you better time to prepare. Again, do your homework on the location. I already told you about that. It can save you a lot of money. So wherever you live at, like Atlanta, nobody lives in Atlanta. People live in the suburbs. I know my first cousin lives there. Uh, Nashville, people live in Nashville. 
but some live in the suburbs of Nashville, as well as the other places, Texas, and oh, I love my Florida. I want to move to Fort Lauderdale part-time. That's my, I'm not going to even say dream, that's my plan, eventually, down the road. Okay, what else we got here? The end. This was a quick and short overview of creating your budget, fixing your credit report, and buying a house or income property. That was just a quick glimpse. I didn't get deep, deep, but I want to give you some information. Hit like, hit subscribe. Please, on this one, I must have comments if you have questions because I can give you even more information if you let me know what you need to talk about, hear about. If you have some questions, um, just let me know. I'm pretty resourceful. I bought a house before. I know some things. I had to fix my credit. I know some things. I've been doing this budget the way I showed you for years. So I know something about something. Um, I think that's all I got. I'm so glad I finally got this thing done. And I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to get on out of here. And you have a superb day. Tammy C. Walker. Bye-bye.